Hi, today I'm going to show you with a Joe. First, with a ski no kamae. How to do a good thrust moving the center or the hips with the, the thrust. So, I'm going to emphasize on that, and I'm also going to show you the, um, the very first beginning with uh, a number of uh, kumijos why they're designed in a specific way um, when the attacker is coming forward in a, a jaw form of attack then we just basically go in so the jaw sticks out um, and there are reasons for this anyway I'm just going to show you how um, we begin with the Tsukinokame Tsukinokame so right there, what you want is having this martial edge. So, skinokame. So you're ready for the thrust. It's important to put the posture right to start with. What we don't want to do is doing this. The jaw is still pointing up. The jaw is actually horizontal. And then you're ready to attack. So this is very important. When you do, you have to find the cocky. When you do the attack, make sure the little finger grips firmly at all times. The way you hold it, is in the form of a cocky. This hand here is allowing the jaw to glide through the hand and you have this feeling of a cocky right there. So I'm going to show you a thrust. Twist the hips. So it isn't a thrust without the movement of the hips. This is dead hips because there's been no movement of hips, dead hips. If you apply Aikido with no movement of hips, you then do physical Aikido, which is shoulders and arms, physical Aikido. You don't want that. You need to use the hips. And immediately, you could see you're into this placement where you're more sideways which helps for itohemi that is the idea of it so skinokame thrust come back one thing you shouldn't be doing is bringing the jaw to the back when you bring the jaw to the back several things you are doing is one you kind of release the small finger and also you're sending a telegram you're making it very obvious you're about to do this and when you come to this stage Tori can come right here and block you so it's very obvious if Tori wants to try and do this you would have to step out of the line which is a more direct thrust. And you don't want to do too far back. In fact, you move in and you thrust. When you do the thrust, you're doing it lower than Skinokame. You go a little bit more down. The idea of it is you thrust and your body is under the jaw. If you're thrust and your body is still there, it's, you're too high. You need to be settling down. Settling down. Now, that's the one thing. I'm gonna show you some movement with, some of the movement we can do with it. Kumijo. 
to which one number one the thrust happens immediately you go to the side so you learn to step up line to which one number two it's more it's coming so the jaw comes forward and you parry but you're still inside so as far as the attacker is concerned you're stuck here you don't want to parry and move all the way back because you're freeing his jaw so in other words you keep his jaw stuck you're in a good position to strike and because of that when Uke strike it forces him to move offline that's why the second Kumijo is formed for the case of the first Kumijo Uke strikes and parry so we have this form and then he has or what he thinks he has that advantage to strike but you need to be finding this relation so the jaw is stuck so for the case of the first commit jaw the jaw here is stuck because leave the jaw in this way you don't make the contact bring the jaw all the way back you can still strike you have to find these points really really strong it's keeping the jaw to a point where Uke is now in a less favorable position stuck I have got the advantage to quickly strike which forces Uke to then move back but this is why we do this practice the same with the third Kumijo same thing we don't move back because moving back you have lost that connection you've lost the way the jaw is attacking what you prefer doing is get into the position where he is absolutely stuck. Now he has to withdraw the jaw. As he withdraws the jaw, you've got a nice movement to parry. There is always a reason for doing these movements. Now, when we emphasize from the ski no kame, when we do the thrust, we should be prepared to move either way. The thrust is not the angle. No. It's too late. So you've got to have that feeling of of stepping and moving. It's very much the same with the movement whereby you strike and withdraw. There's a link or parry and parry and strike. You do multiple strike at the same time or a movement following with another. It can also be this way. It's important to study the movements but also to begin with a good placement of your feet, good harmony, good positioning of your hips, relax the shoulders, move as one with the center so you're not thrusting with the arms only. If you do 
arms along, what you risk doing is this actually. Place your feet and strike because you're not using the center. If you use the center, your feet and thrust go in one. In one movement. That is how you can tell if the hips are used. And then you've got all these possibilities. the feel of this. Relax the shoulders and find a good good power which comes from here, not from the chest. Anyway, I'd like to think this video has been helpful. Thank you for watching.